Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the inland Northwest. glowing sunset illuminates unique decorations in the tiny village of Donalda, located northeast of Red Deer, Alberta. Donalda streetlights are actually lamp posts. As darkness sets in, the world's largest lamp, a 42-foot beacon, shines its light so that everyone can see that Donalda is Canada's lamp capital. And in the morning light, Donalda's District Museum opens its doors, allowing visitors to view North America's largest in-house collection of oil-burning lamps. The lamps are shimmering works of art that illuminate a page of history. And they were spread out throughout homes. They were in, in bedrooms, they were in parlors, in libraries, anywhere where extra light was needed and uh, you wanted to add a little beauty to the home. The original lamp collection belonged to local residents Don and Beth Lawson. They began collecting in 1939. And I think the, the reason that they started it, she had been given some lamps for, as a Christmas gift many years ago, and she just decided she'd add to it, and it snowballed from there. Don and Beth kept their lamps in their home and happily let visitors come in to view them. In 1979, the Lawsons donated their collection to Donalda. When they gave the collection to the village of Donald, it was with the understanding that they would build a, a museum to house this collection. The museum was soon established. Volunteers ran it, with the curator also serving as museum manager and janitor. The building also houses the village library. The Donalda Museum now displays over 5,000 artifacts. Additional lamps have been purchased or donated. I think there was around 650 lamps in their collection and several other artifacts. They've all been catalogued so we know which ones were the original and which have been donated since. One lamp has the distinctive nickname Grandpa. This was the first lamp in the Lawson's personal collection. It's not the oldest lamp, but it was the first. Some of the Donalda Museum lamps date back to the early 1600s, while most are from the 1700s and 1800s, and a few from the 1900s. The lamps offer a colorful look at the past. Long ago, simple candle holders served as inexpensive sources of light. This early style of lamp consists of a pie plate with a wick held in place by a stone. Kerosene was poured in the plate and the wick was lit. This came to be known as a hard times lamp. Some early lamps burned a mixture of alcohol and turpentine, which was cheap, smokeless, and highly explosive. These lamps weren't very popular. They were eventually replaced by relatively safer coal oil and kerosene lamps. Lamps played an important role in North American history. Wherever light was needed, a lamp was made for the purpose. The dependable source of light allowed for increased working hours, productivity, and education. Modern society developed greatly because of lamplight. Lamps became a fixture on a variety of vehicles. For instance, a ship port lamp always hung on the left side or port side of a ship. When sailors saw these lanterns in the dark, they knew which side of the ship they were seeing. Likewise, this lamp would hang on the side of a 1916 Model T Ford. Side mounting lamps were used extensively in the railroad. Railway lamps had a special shock-absorbing mount to withstand the jarring of rail cars as they were hooking up. Bracket lamps, which hung inside rail cars, stations, and bunkhouses, were quite common in the rail industry. The wagon lamp used to hang on the passenger side of a wagon traveling down the road. At a crossroad, the driver would stop, get out, and swing the lamp as a warning to others. The driver would then replace the lamp and shoot a gun twice into the air to signal that he was crossing the intersection. This lamp had a reflector to better focus the light. Special lamps were used as signal devices during World War II, and lamps with special red glass were used in the dark rooms of photographers. 
Even in the home, lamps perform special functions beyond giving light. Some lamps had a small wire frame that would allow for heating coffee in an enamel cup or for toasting bread. A vapo chrysoline lamp was meant to heat camphor, pine tar, or a substance called chrysoline, which was used to treat respiratory problems like asthma or bronchitis. A popular style was called the peanut lamp. They came in different sizes to fit different uses. For instance, some peanut lamps had huge kerosene bowls so they could be used on sewing machines and would not fall off from the vibration. To save on table space, hanging lamps were developed and used in libraries and hallways. Hanging lamps came in various sizes and materials. Some could be lowered to make fueling easier. More expensive lamps had prisms attached to help give light and beautify the home. Many parlor lamps were hand-painted and lent a touch of elegance to more expensive homes. The vase lamp did double duty. The owner could remove the burner and use the lamp as a flower vase. The museum at Denalda also displays unusual lamps, like St. Lawrence hand lamps, which were Canadian-made around the year 1880. The handles were applied by hand by different craftsmen, so no two St. Lawrence lamps are exactly alike. The cup and saucer lamp is one of the few lamps to be molded upside down to accommodate its design. The saucer is meant to catch excess kerosene as the lamp was being filled. Some lamps have historically inaccurate names like the Lincoln drape, so named because of the design and deep red color resembling theater drapes like those near President Lincoln when he was assassinated. But the lamp itself was not created until 1941, almost 80 years after Lincoln's death. Another anachronistic name is the Gone with the Wind lamp, which features a matching floral design on the shade and kerosene bowl. This style of lamp wasn't made until the years after the Civil War, but it was featured in the movie Gone with the Wind, so the name stuck. Literally thousands of designs were produced by glass companies in North America and Europe. Many of the patterns, colors, and functions of oil lamps are available to view at the Donalda Museum. The museum is open year-round, Admission is free so that everyone can enjoy the displays. Donations are accepted. Visitors from as far away as Japan have come to experience the natural historic setting of Donalda and the various artifacts displayed in the museum, clothing, tools, and containers. But the main attraction is the glistening, fragile historic lamps that tell their stories of how life used to be. If you have a story idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSPS TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSPS Public Television.